from our studios here at Tadesawe here in Kanda. This is the news album. My name, my name is Alfred Okansi now. Tonight on Key Point, our lens is zooming straight into a case of wrongful conviction. Supreme Court discharges and acquits a 37-year-old former teacher who was wrongfully jailed for 15 years for defiling a 14-year-old pupil. This is a classic case of wrongful uh, jailing. After serving the jail term, it turns out that a DNA test of the baby of the supposedly defiled pupil shows the teacher is not responsible for that baby. We have an exclusive interview both with the convicted teacher and his lawyer right here on Key Point. We're going to be getting into the details of this particular issue. Remember, this bulletin is also streaming live on freenews.com and also on DSTV channel 279. My name is Alfred Okonse and this is Key Point. Please stay. So just as you see behind me, this is the case we're going to be getting into very shortly. But I'm going to run you through a brief detail of what exactly constituted this particular issue. The Supreme Court has discharged and acquitted a 37-year-old former teacher, Eric Asante, who was wrongfully jailed for 15 years for defiling a 14-year-old pupil. His action which was uh, inferred to have also resulted in the birth of a child, but a DNA test proved that he was not the biological father of the baby. Eric Asante, a teacher at Tamalignoni Presbyterian School, was sentenced to 15 years imprisonment for allegedly defiling a 14-year-old pupil in his class. He was found guilty in September 5, 2015 with hard labor by the Tamil Secute Court. Eric's appeal at the Court of Appeal on October 6, 2006 was dismissed though he continuously maintained his innocence. In 2012, he proceeded to the Supreme Court where the court ordered for a DNA test to be conducted on the baby. The court order was saved and received on behalf of the victim by two of her aunts who are taking care of her and her child. The family refused to bring the child to Accra as ordered by the court though they were given eight weeks for the test to be conducted. Not even the intervention of the Northern Regional Police Commander could persuade them. The baby was finally brought to Accra for the test months after the order where the results showed that the teacher was not the biological father of the baby. Erika Santi urged the police not to rest on the case. I wish that uh, the AG department can open a fresh investigation to the matter. You know, from the judgment of the court, it means that uh, there is a, a true culprit out there who committed the crime and connived with the lady to implicate me. In delivering the judgment on the appeal against his conviction, the Supreme Court said the sentence of the teacher could not be held because there were numerous inaccuracies in the evidence provided by the prosecution. Counsel to Eric Asante explained how the case was handed over to him. The case was first referred to me by the graphics communication group and since we received the matter we have been following it up and we are so much grateful to God that today the Supreme Court has finally acquitted and discharged him. Because once we read the brief we knew that uh, this was a case of injustice meted out to him and we believe that uh, a day like this will come when we would um, have justice for Eric Asante. Eric Asante will have to apply to the state for compensation. Well, so as the saying goes that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We're going to be getting into exactly what uh, this case is and the details of it. I'm going to be joined in studio by the victim of this particular case and his lawyer. But just a brief a summary of the facts of this case as on your screens right now. Erica Sante was wrongfully uh, jailed for 15 years for defiling a 14-year-old pupil in 2005. And uh, as you can see on your screens right now out of uh, that particular issue the act is said to have resulted in the birth of a child now after that 10 years of serving the 15 year jail term it has also been proven to be that the DNA test has proven that he was not 
the biological father of the baby. These are the basic facts of this particular case that uh, we are going to be getting into uh, very, very shortly and find out exactly what could have led to this. And it's one of many cases that have come up. I've been joined in studio by this man, the victim in this particular case, and also his lawyer. I'm talking about Eric Asante and uh, lawyer Francis Javier So It's good to have you, and good evening to you. Evening, you, you, you must be relieved uh, yes. after this particular period. And yes. I, I must say that congratulations to you, lawyer, as well. You're gradually carving a niche for yourself in defending persons whose uh, rights have been uh, violated in this country. Well, um, it's a calling, and I believe that it's a very important part of uh, our legal practice. So um, I just see it as um, doing our job. That's what we are called to do. You serve a jail term of 15 years. That is correct. For allegedly defiling a 14-year-old, of which you were pronounced guilty. Yeah. And eventually, you've been pronounced innocent after seven to 15 years jail yes. term. How exactly did it all happen? Just give us a brief detail of this particular case. Yes, uh, the, the, the incident happened in uh, 2003. And uh, it happens that uh, one of uh, people in the school where uh, I teach who raised this uh, uh, allegation against me that uh, I have uh, defiled her, which is not true. And I, I actually insisted on my innocence but the, both the trial court and the court of appeal did not understand my story. So it had to travel all the way to Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court finally, after a, a, a DNA uh, evidence has been uh, adduced before the courts, the court in its wisdom uh, uh, believed my story and accordingly acquitted in the surgery. At the time, the victim said you were guilty for the crime. Yes. Now, why would the victim say that you were guilty uh, when, when you were not? What, what's the kind of re relationship between the two of you? All that I know is that uh, the child is in the school where I teach. I don't have any relationship with her. Even she wasn't in the class where I was teaching. So I was much surprised that uh, the, the girl in question raised such wicked allegation against me. I ask this question because uh, the many who have divergent views about this, that you, you're not the only teacher in the school. Yes. And you're even telling me that she wasn't even in your class. Yes. So what could have led to you being the one to have had to be zeroed in and accused for a crime that you did not commit? Yes. That's the very question I even ask myself. That uh, we have more than 10 uh, male teachers in the school. And she didn't choose anybody apart from me. So this question, even though I have been uh, acquitted, I'm still thinking why this lady did not choose anybody, but it is me that uh, she chose to implicate in this uh, 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 wicked uh, situation. What was the condition of the victim uh, uh, when you were standing uh, trial, or when this whole trial was going on? Was she pregnant? Has she given birth already uh, at the time before you were jailed? Yes, the very day that... Uh, I was confronted by the family. Uh, the next day, they lodged a complaint to the police. And from the police medical form, it was uh, known that uh, she is 23 weeks pregnant. 23 so weeks. she gave birth even before the trial began. She gave birth before the, the trial, trial began. began. And, and the courts did not commit Cons to a, a DNA test to detect whether you were the, the one guilty of it or not. That is correct. The court did not consider that. I even insisted it, but it was ignored. No, but lawyer, let me engage you here on this point. How did the court come to such a conclusion without uh, uh, engaging or having to resort to a DNA test? Because I wanted to understand the fundamentals, whether the, the, the victim in question had already given birth before the beginning of the trial. And I'm from the understanding, mm. she gave birth before the trial began, mm. but Absolutely. there was no uh, decision to have a yeah. DNA test. And I think that is part of the deficiency in the whole trial. You know, and... Um, I am sure that is the reason why we are having this conversation today, because uh, there was a mistrial at a point in time. Mm -hmm. Under Article 19 of the Constitution, everyone who is alleged to have committed uh, any offense is supposed to be presumed innocent until proven guilty. 
what it means is that you are supposed to prove the guilt of the accused beyond reasonable, reasonable doubt. doubt. Uh, on that occasion, a multitude of suspicion mm. cannot ground a conviction. And we have several authorities in law that shows that the, fa the mere fact that, look, it is very suspicious when you look at how things are, why is it that, you know, for example, mm. the question, there are so many teachers in the school, why is it that she pointed at you? And there was an part of an allegation that says that there was some love letter written to, uh, to him, and, and so on and so forth. These are mere suspicions. If you want to have a conviction that would stand, you must go beyond, must be beyond reasonable these, doubt. You know, these mere suspicions. But unfortunately, uh, the prosecution rather decided to rely on those mere suspicions. And I think one of the reasons is that, you know, when it comes to definition of defilement, mm -hmm. uh, the fact that the act resulted in pregnancy is immaterial. All we need is a fact of sexual intercourse. So I'm sure the view they might have taken is that we don't care whether she's pregnant or she has a baby. The fact that she says that she had sex with you is enough to grant conviction. And I think that is quite okay. But mm -hmm. when the victim in question went ahead to say that he is the author of the pregnancy, or he's responsible, he's responsible for, for the that. pregnancy, then it stands to reason that to make this whole thing conclusive, then let us know what happened, you know, with the pregnancy. Because now that it proves that he's not a father, I mean, we can then conclude that many things that the lady said were lies and concoctions. But it doesn't take away the fact that there could have been sexual Absolute, Absolutely. But you see, the point is that in, in criminal trials, okay. if there is a lingering doubt, it must inure to the benefit of the accused person. So if you say that he is the author of the pregnancy, and it turns out that he is not, then we can't rely, you, are, you see, you are untruthful okay. witness. So we can't rely on your evidence to convict anybody. Now, so what's his status now? Is he an ex-convict or because of this particular ruling, it just waves him off everything? Absolutely. You know, he has finished serving the sentence. But today, as of today, he's no more, I mean, an ex-convict. In fact, it's as if nothing ever happened. His slate is clean. As far as criminal records are concerned. How widespread are such uh, cases, especially in our, our prisons? Because fact, this, is, this is the second or third time you're having to uh, uh, fight for somebody's rights in, honestly, in a case like this. Honestly, there are just several of them. The truth is that there are many of them that do not even come to the public eye. But almost on a weekly basis, we have cases like this. We do most, mostly visit in some prisons and other prisons in this country. Mm -hmm. And there are just so many people who are in prison. For offenses they never committed mm. but one mm. lack of resources mm. to get lawyers and so on and so forth makes it extremely difficult mm. are to you going to advocate for compensation for him because i recall in felix best case he asked for some five million cities was that paid by the state well we are still pursuing that it hasn't been paid yet no we, it, it, it's a process in this case as well in this case most likely we are supposed to go for some 10 million ghana cities 10 million ghana yes cities. and we would we, we are trusting god that will pursue it until its logical conclusion. What are you going to do to the lady in question, having uh, the court ruling that he, he, she wrongfully accused your client? Honestly, this is a case of malicious prosecution. She could be sued in several suits, you know, for malicious prosecution for compensation. Are you but going to sue her? Are you no, going we to are not going her? to do that. In fact, I don't have instructions to do that. Okay. But I think that we are not going to do that. We are we're going to spend our energies in rebuilding Eric and his future instead of following up the little girl. If the state had done well, mm -hmm. we wouldn't have come here. Eric, what next for you after this particular ruling, finally? Yes, uh, I, I feel happy and uh, I, I, as man, I will see how I will just put my pieces together and continue with my life. Eric Asante mm -hmm. is, is a free man now, one of the happiest men on, on the face mm -hmm. of the earth right now. But uh, lawyer uh, uh, Francis uh, Soso, have a congratulations to you, I must say. Uh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And uh, this uh, what is how we round up the key point here on, on TV360.